I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Don't go through a breakup alone. Click on the link in the description below to get a one-on-one -on -one coaching with me or go to my website, AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about should I trust them? So, trust is an incredibly important aspect of relationships and it's incredibly fragile in a relationship. It could take years to build it and just seconds to lose it completely. And I thought it would be a good topic for you guys as I don't think I've covered it too much, but it's so important that you can feel like you can trust your partner for so many reasons. And strictly from a biological perspective, if you think about it, if you have a woman, if you're a guy, who is unfaithful, she could get pregnant and you could wind up raising someone else's child. Now, I'm not talking about the morals behind it or the, you know, or that if it's, you know, right or wrong or that it's not acceptable. I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying strictly from a biological perspective, you would be investing your resources to take care of somebody else's child. Now, the same thing goes for women. If you cheat on your woman and you get another woman pregnant, that would mean you would have to uh, expend your resources to taking care or to taking care of your child and that might take away from her children with you. So, just looking at life as a biological issue, don't don't get, you know, uppity about it. So I don't want people to get upset that saying, oh no, I, I've been with a girlfriend that had another kid and I loved her like my own and that was one of the reasons that that breakup was so incredibly difficult was because I was so attached to the child. But, I'm just trying to show you why trust is so important. And I think, if you really think about it, that is why a woman's reputation is so incredibly important. And I'm saying, historically, if you look at it, there's always been a lot of pressure on women and their reputation to, you know be faithful or not be, you know, gallivanting around the town with all the different guys. I'm not placing my judgment on it, okay? I'm just saying, if you look at historically why that's happened, it's because of biologically, if a woman was out with a lot of different guys, you could be with her romantically, think you're in a committed relationship, and wind up um, thinking that it's your child and it's not, okay? So, that I think is some of the underlying issues with trust, biologically. Now, emotionally, we want to feel, as human beings, this intense, safe connection with our partners. And we want to feel as close to them as we possibly can. And the closer we feel, and the safer we feel, the uh, more... Uh, protected we feel and the happier we are the more joy that we have that's what uh, a real relationship is when when you're really feeling connected with your partner it's really joy it's true joy and any kind of disconnect um, it makes us scared that's ultimately why relationships are so difficult it's two scared people all the time trying to make it work and so if we feel disconnected from our partner and we feel scared, it ultimately makes us feel like our partner is a threat, right? And it triggers our anxiety. And so if you have had past traumas with that and your attachment with your caregivers was traumatic and stressful, then you're going to have more anxiety and it's going to lead to a lot more symptoms of the anxiety coming out and acting out. So, if we have a partner 
that is deceitful and does things that are distrustful, it is going to cause us physical pain. It is going to trigger our fears and our anxiety. And it is literally going to hurt us. And I think any kind of betrayal of a spouse is going to trigger that pain and hurt. Whether it be something as extreme as your partner having sex with somebody else. But I think it can even go as to somebody kissing somebody else. And I was having a conversation with somebody recently where we were discussing, is kissing cheating? Now, obviously, you're all going to have your own interpretations of what cheating is. And for me, I think that if you are in a agreed-upon monogamous relationship and you kiss somebody else, that's cheating. To me, like I said, Everybody has their own interpretations or agreements in a committed relationship. For me, I believe if you're supposed to be in a committed relationship and you are doing something to betray that commitment of exclusivity, you are being intimate with somebody else. And for me, that it's cheating. I mean, what about dancing with somebody else? Is that cheating? Well, there's all kinds of dancing, isn't there? Some of that dancing certainly could be interpreted as cheating, right? I'm sure you guys have been to a nightclub before and seen some people getting extremely uh, intimate. Is that cheating? Well, would you want someone to do it to you? Probably not. Some of you guys might not care. Everybody's different. I wouldn't like it. Uh... Now, you obviously might not break up with somebody over them dancing with somebody else, but are you going to feel betrayed? If you're honest with yourself, probably. And if you feel betrayed by your partner, it's going to ultimately scare you and cause you to be fearful about the commitment and their level of commitment to your relationship. So... That being said, I think it's very beneficial for each relationship to define their own expectations of monogamy before you enter that relationship. And if it's something that you're not comfortable with, be upfront, don't get into that relationship. A lot of people are not upfront. They're deceitful, and they will try to use you or lie to you to get what they want. And they treat you like an object. Now, the main reason that I decided to do this video today was because I had a conversation with one of the guys that I've been working with for several months now. And we've been doing a lot of Skypes together over the past few months. I'll give you a scenario, or give you his scenario. Um... He has been completely head over heels in love with the girl that he's been dating for several years. And um, what happened is he obviously came to me for their breakup situation. Now, he had tremendous amounts of anxiety when we first started working together. And um, what had happened was his ex had started dating somebody else. Now, the thing was is that she started to hang out with a manager that worked with her. And he got upset and confronted the guy. Now, he regrets confronting the guy. He should have confronted her. But she was not honest with him. And she got angry and said, oh, we're just friends. And, of course, she broke up with him and wound up dating this manager dude. So that lasted for a few months. Now, when I started with him, I told him right from the get-go that I did not think she was worth pursuing and obsessing over like he was because she was very young and her behavior seemed untrustworthy and really immature. And he didn't care because he just wanted another shot. A lot of times you guys just want another shot. I totally get it. Believe me, I do. And if you want to, you're in a situation where you know things aren't that great, but you still want another shot, 
I understand completely, and I'll I'll do what I can to give you the best chance of reattracting your ex. Um, but I also will be upfront about I would do it. But that's how I say things with you guys. I I don't tell you how to live your life. I would just say what I would do because you guys usually ask me what would you do, and I'm I'm honest about that. So let's get back to the situation because to me this is a pretty messed up one. So, about a month ago, they did get back together, and things were actually going great. Until just before Christmas, when he had planned to go away to see some family for, I guess, maybe a couple weeks. Well, they had a conversation where she asked him if he was sleeping with somebody else, and he said no, he wasn't. And then, so he said to her, well, are you sleeping with somebody else? Or anybody else? And she said, no, she hadn't been. So, the way the conversation kind of flowed was that he said, well, I'll tell you if I do, and he was under the assumption, or she was making it seem like, oh, she'll tell him, but she was definitely like, well, no, I haven't been with anybody else. Made it seem like they were going to be monogamous, at least um, sexually, that maybe they weren't in a committed relationship, but they were at least committed to just not being intimate with other people, or if they were, they were going to be upfront about it. So, let me move on here. Okay, so he went out of town to go visit the family when she contacts him and said that she had lost her car keys and was like panicked. So he was like, whoa, he was thinking, I actually have a spare key. So he decided to go back to where she lived, which is close to four hours away, to give her the key. Well, they wound up having an amazing night, and he was really happy with the whole situation. So, he's still out of town for New Year's, and they're talking about things, and they're talking about New Year's, and I guess the New Year's Eve kiss came up. And... She asked, or he asked her, well, did you kiss anyone for New Year's? And she said, yes, she had kissed one of her girlfriends. When she said, did you kiss somebody else? He said, yes, and said that he made out with a random girl. But, here's the twist. There was no random girl. He didn't kiss anybody. He just told her that because he... He wanted her to feel a little jealousy. He wanted her to, you know, get anxious about the situation. And I wouldn't have told him to do that. He did that on his own. But he felt really guilty about it. So he said to, you know, hey, he called her and said, listen, I got to talk to you. I got to tell you something. So he called her up and she's like, what's going on? And he's like, well, I... I gotta tell you, there was no girl on New Year's. I didn't kiss anybody. And he's like, I just been feeling really, really guilty about it. And she's like, I don't want you to feel guilty about that. Don't, don't worry about it. He's like, yeah, but I told you I kissed this other girl, and I didn't, and I don't know why I did that. I really want to be upfront with you. I really want to be honest with you. You're a, you're an amazing girl, and I like where things are going. Whatever, whatever. And she's like, I don't want you to feel guilty. He started thinking about it. He's like, well, why? I don't understand. Like, what's going on? Like, did, did you hook up with somebody else? Did something happen with somebody else that you're, like, kind of not make me feel bad about this? And then she admitted that she had been with somebody else. Now, here's the problem. He had gone to see her. Like I told you, he drove hours, hours away to go see her. Right? They hooked up. He went back to his family. She hooked up with somebody else while he was gone. He didn't know it. He came back, had unprotected sex with her. He had no idea she had been intimate with somebody else. He was under the assumption that they were exclusive. So, I have a major problem with this because she was leading him to believe she's exclusive with him. He had no idea 
she had been with somebody else and had unprotected sex. Obviously, there are tremendous consequences that can come from that. He could get um, HPV, he could get herpes, he could get uh, chlamydia, he could get um, hepatitis, AIDS. I mean, it's there's a lot of disease out there. And that is not okay to do that. You cannot let somebody believe that you're going to be faithful to them or let them know if you're going to be intimate with somebody else. Then not tell them when you have been and let them have unprotected sex. But then, after he had sex with her, she hooked up with the guy again and he had unprotected sex with her again, still not knowing. So I have a major, major problem with somebody doing this. And I don't think he should trust her any longer. That is an extreme violation of trust. She has now put his health at risk. That's not okay to do. Some of you guys brush that off. I think it's extremely important. What if, you know, she says she had protected sex with this guy, but let's be honest, you could still get it. There are other ways to catch uh, an STD other than penetration, right? So, not okay to lead somebody to believe you are being faithful to them, that they can have unprotected sex with you, and that it's okay. And I think this is a major, major red flag. There are plenty of other red flags along the way, but this is an extreme violation of trust. When somebody's putting your health at risk like this, not okay. Did she cheat? No. She didn't cheat because they weren't committed. But it's pretty, pretty borderline, isn't it? Right? I mean, it's right there. I mean, he was under the assumption that they were going to tell each other. She didn't. But then she let him have unprotected sex with her twice. And that is a major violation of trust. And if you have somebody do something like that, it shows a real sign of immaturity. And if, you, if they're going to be capable of that, they're going to be capable of doing a lot of other immature, selfish behavior along the way. So, you need to really consider if your partner is somebody that you can trust. Because like I said in the beginning of the video, there's going to be a lot of symptoms of anxiety, stress, disconnect, all that stuff, if there's no trust there. So, if you want to get my help personally, go to my website, AskCraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. If you like the video and you appreciate my hard work putting these out there every day, just throw a like on there. I appreciate that. And be sure to subscribe to the channel because I do post videos Monday through Friday. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon.